It was March 15th and Anderson's Candy Shop was off to the best first quarter in several years and our second biggest season, Easter, was just around the corner. It was fun to show up at work and I was about to become a grandpa <clears throat> for the second time. I'm married to my best friend and I belong to a church that I'm nuts about. Yeah, I'm going to be 70 soon and I see five doctors every month, but I feel like I'm 50. In fact, I was on top of the world when suddenly the lights were turned off and the doors were locked because of COVID-19. Overnight, businesses were forced to close and citizens hide at home. Without much income, people were not in the mood to purchase my chocolates. Many of you can imagine the instant stress that overcame me. After 101 years, our family business was on the verge of collapse. My wife and I were the only workers available. My son needed help with online schooling. Our church stopped meeting. And then all but one of our summertime money makers, the county fairs, were closed down as well. And I snapped. I snapped. There's no other way to put it. I became a raging monster that no one wanted to be around. So this is the wonderful life that God has planned for me? I turned to my wife. Everything became an argument. I ignored the fact that as hard as I had it, as scared as I was of losing everything, my wife Tracy had it even harder. She worked longer and she felt even worse. I couldn't ride in a car with anyone or listen to any radio station because the news would come on and I'd be screaming at the radio because it was all about me. I didn't realize, I didn't understand, but God had his eye on me the whole time and he was trying his hardest to help me. He led me earlier in the month to give up Facebook for Lent. Thank God for that. I would have been through the roof with all the online debates. He saved me from a heart attack when I turned off the TV completely. And he surrounded me with his love in the form of an earthly angel, my wife. Yes, Tracy fought way harder than me to save our marriage. And she would daily challenge me. If I really believed in God, which only made me matter. If I really believed in him, I would give Jesus all my cares. I would put all my trust in him and his plan would come out good. My daughter was afraid to let, let me visit my granddaughter because my rage was so out of control. She reminded me that I didn't raise her that way. I raised her to believe that our God is bigger than anything Satan can throw at us. And my physical therapist, Mackenzie, who I saw three times a week, is a devout witnessing Christian, and even she was ashamed for me that I would call myself a Christian and not put my trust in God, not open my hands and give my trust to Him. About this same time, Pastor Brian recommended that small groups study Rick Warren's Habits of Happiness. And we learned that each one of us controls our own happiness. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote the letter about happiness from a prison cell. This Bible study and the people that God brought to speak into my life eroded my hardened heart and forced my eyes open to all of the grace Christ had shown me despite my anger and my rage. I began to look at the cup as half full again, at all of the blessings I'd been given, such as a loving wife, a forgiving wife, a wonderful family, and a business that, so far, had survived. Recently, we hosted an outdoor candy shop event on our lawn, mini golf and mini donuts, expecting our ter typical turnout of hundreds of people, but we ended up with only a handful. It was a horrid, expensive flop, but amazing things happened because we were so slow, and I had the time to talk at length with several guests. I talked with one man who donated his entire $600 government check to the candy shop's designated charity, the Family Health Partnership Clinic. His generosity lifted my spirits. Another friend from the community showed up all crippled and barely audible due to a horrid car accident. We talked about his miraculous recovery and the hard road ahead of him to recovery. And he told me about his faith that God had brought him this far because he had more plans for him. 
He heard about how Trinity helps people in our neighborhood and asked if he could use his plumbing skills next summer if we did reach out again. I realized that because we were unexpectedly slow, I actually took the time to talk with him and so many others. As I look back on these past four months, these words of God from the book of Jeremiah have become my reality. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm for you, plans to give you hope and a future.